Part A of this question was done in the previous video. Now let's go to part B. As always, let's begin with the requirements. Prepare relevant extracts from the statement of financial position. So we need SFP extracts of Omega at 30th September 2013 and its statement of profit or loss. Another comprehensive income for the year ended 30th September 2013. You should give appropriate explanations to support your extracts. We have got six marks. We are clearly asked to give appropriate explanations. As it happens, we accountants are very much used to calculations and in the exam, many of the candidates had not given any explanation. That doesn't mean that necessarily they had no idea of the explanations, but they had not given it. Therefore, they didn't get marks that were allocated for the explanations. The requirements do not give us any idea as to these extracts are about what. So therefore, let's go to the explanation in the question and see what we are asked. On 1st October 2011, Omega granted share options. So here we have got share options to 200 senior executives. The options will vest on 30th September 2014, subject to the following conditions. So here we are told what are the vesting conditions. Each executive will be entitled to 1,000 options if the cumulative profit in the three-year period from 1st October 2011 to 30th September 2014 exceeds 30 million. So there is a three-year period condition and in that if the profit exceeds 30 million, then they will be entitled to 1,000 options, each of them. If the cumulative profit for this period is between 35 million and 40 million, then 1500 options will vest. If the cumulative profit for the period exceeds 40 million, then 2000 options will vest. If an executive leaves during the three year vesting period, then that executive would forfeit any rights to share options, notwithstanding. The above no option will vest unless the share price at 30th September 2014 exceeds $5. Let's have a look at vesting conditions. If vesting conditions are based on minimum period of service, achievement, of sales target, profit targets, or successful flotations, Flotation of shares. These are called non market vesting conditions. However, if the vesting conditions are about share price or if they are about minimum increase in shareholder return, in that case they are called market based vesting conditions. As we can see, we are talking about profit targets and we are talking about three-year vesting period. These two are non-market-based vesting conditions. However, the last one, 
which says that the share price should exceed $5 at uh, 30th September 2014. This is a market-based Western condition. This information is needed when we are writing the explanations. Details of the fair values of the shares and share options at relevant dates are as follows. Fair value of an omega share, fair value of one of the options. We need this one. For our calculations, three figures are important for us. Number one, what is the value of the of the share options? Second, we need number of employees. that will receive the options and the last one time proportion in our case the total years are 3 so in year 1 it will be 1 over 3 in year 2 it will be 2 in year 3 it will be 3 over 3. The estimate of the cumulative profit for the 3 years period ending 30th September 2014 was revised each year as follows. On 1st October 2011 it was 32 million. 30th September 2012 it is 39 million and 30th September 2013 45 million they will be getting 2,000 options. Now, from here, we can calculate the value of the options. As per IFRS 2, we need to use the value of the option at the grant date. So, therefore, these two together make, may make the value of the options for one person. On 1st October 2011, none of the relative executives were expected to leave in three year period. No one is going to leave. And none left in the year ended 30th September 2012. So in the first year, there were 200 complete year one however 10 executives left unexpectedly on 30th June 2013 none of the other executives are expected to leave before 30th September 2014 when we are calculating year two in this case we will be taking the number 190 because we know that 10 have gone and the estimations do not indicate that this number will decrease. Omega correctly reflected this arrangement in its financial statements for the year ended 30th September 2012. We are asked for figures for statement of financial position and we are also asked for statement of comprehensive income. We need to remember that they are equity options. Therefore, the figures will be reflected in the equity. In the equity section of our statement of financial position. In the statement of comprehensive income, we need to reflect it in HR costs because this is given as remuneration to the executive directors. I have opened a blank page to use for giving the answer as we are asked for in the question. This is question 4. 
path B. We need to do two things. First is calculations. Second is explanations. We will start with statement of financial position. We need to have the, the value of the options. The value of one option was 050 and each director will be receiving 2000 options therefore it is 1000. Explanations value of one option based on the value on the grant date number of options based on latest estimates as a non-market vesting condition. Number of executives This is 190. It is also based on latest estimates as a non-market vesting condition. Proportion vested. We can see that the options were granted on 1st October 2011 and now we are preparing the financial statements for September 30th 2013. So it means two years have passed. Two years have passed and the total number of years is 3, 2 by 3. Our options, the total value is 1000 into 190 into 2 over 3. It gives us 1, 2, 6, 6, 6, 7. It is equity. We are done with the statement of financial position. Now it is time for statement of comprehensive income. Our HR, our HR cost, cumulative, recognized, 
it is one two six 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 seven in explanations c above this is cumulative for the current year but we have recognized part of it in the last year therefore we need to calculate that part and then deduct it from here recognized last year one thing does not change which is the value of one option because it is used as per the grant date on September 30th 2012 the estimated profit for 30th September 2014 was 39 million and if it were between 35 million and 40 million then each executive director was gonna be given 1500 options at the same time none left in the year 30th September 2012 therefore we need to use 1500 because it is based on the latest estimates and the total number of employees 200 and our time proportion last year was 1 over 3 the value comes to 50,000 we need to deduct this HR cost for current year it will be 76,667 our answer finishes here but it's not a bad idea to look at why these share options are given shareholders are expecting the company to maximize their wealth and let's have put here expectations and they hire directors as their agents the directors are expected to work whatever are the expectations of the shareholders this does not always happen in that way because directors think about their own benefits therefore in order to align the expectations of the shareholders and the interests of the directors among the remuneration package for the executive directors share options are included so if the profit of the company exceeds a certain limit the executives would be able to exercise these share options and this mechanism is used with the expectations that this will make the executive directors work for the maximization of the shareholder wealth thank you bye